Okay, I'm going to show um, all the Chatein demos that I tried to show in class but kind of failed. Uh, some of them worked, but I just wanted to go through them really quick. And this is the uh, repo on GitHub. There are four different demos. Let's try the first one, which is uh, using the P5 DOM functions to send notes to uh, the pilot synth. So let's see how that works. Uh, here's the repo and I'll go into the p5.js dom pilot folder. Uh, the, yeah, of course the HTML looks like we'd expect and then there's um, the actual p5 program which looks like this. It's very simple. I'm just going to run through each of these in turn. So the first thing is we're just using the dom functions to create a text field and a button. Uh, we know how to do that. It just looks like this. And then we have a handler that anytime someone presses on the button, it's going to call this play note function. And that's really the meat of this whole thing, right? Right there. So uh, yeah, with no canvas, we create the button and the text field. Then this is the important part. We're connecting to a WebSocket server. Since we can't send UDP directly to pilot, we're sending it through WebSockets. Everything we do from P5 is just, you know, to kind of make life easier for us is going to send through WebSockets, whether we're trying to reach a MIDI device or something like Pilot that uses UDP or whatever, lighting a lighting system that uses DMX or um, we're trying to control PowerPoint slides. Whatever we're doing, I think the idea is, uh, or at least what I'm proposing, is that we just use WebSockets every time. And then Chatein will handle the translation to whatever protocol or hardware or software we need. So here um, we're opening the WebSocket and uh, then we have a, again, in the same way that we have play note as a handler for when someone presses the mouse, we have a function called open handler whenever the socket gets opened. So all we're doing in that handler is just logging to the console that the connection was made. Again, um, this is this is what the uh, connection or the kind of the address of the WebSocket server looks like. It's ws colon slash slash and then the uh, IP address and the port number. And um, these, you know, the IP address, obviously this is localhost. So this is our computer that we're sitting at, but it could be a different computer. Uh, and then the 8080 is the address of the server. And that's just what we were going to define in Chatein, which is which is the WebSocket server. So um, play note just does uh, one thing, which is take whatever was in the text field and stick it together to make it look like a message that um, that pilot likes, which is zero, and then the octave and the note, and then we're just doing FF at the end for velocity and, and note length. One interesting thing is that I'm doing note colon in the beginning, and that's to help Chatein so that um, when the message comes in, it knows how to address it, and I'll show you how that works in a minute. Um, then uh, it just sends the the note through the WebSocket server. And this actually could be really simple, which is just this line, right? Send the note. What I'm doing here is a little bit more. I'm just checking to make sure that the socket is open and then it, the connection was made. And if it's not, then it should say that there's an, an error. So otherwise, you know, if we don't really care about errors, we could just have that one line be, uh, be the, the main thing that sends the note. So hopefully that makes sense. This is relatively simple. This is the only thing that's new is how we create a socket, how we have a handler for it, which is down here, and then how we actually send something through the socket. So not too much new. Now in uh, Chatein, which is totally new to us, I uh, explained this in class, but basically what we'd want to do is add a protocol, which would be our WebSocket server. And we can configure it over here. Here's the port 8080. And um, there are some other things here that we have to be concerned with, how it's going to send information or receive information, how they're going to be separated. And I've used a colon. I had note colon and the message. So I'm using uh, colon separated here. And uh, I think that might be mostly it. I'm just going to load the, the file configuration though, just to make sure. The other thing I'm going to do is add a separate protocol, which is UDP. And this is the one that's going to send to pilot. So again, same thing here. How do I want to send to it? Um, I, I think maybe it's direct, which is just sending the, the text directly to it. Um, and then the port. So this is, uh, you know, Chatein is the glue between um, the WebSocket 
requests that uh, P5 is sending and the UDP that Pilot wants to receive. So it's going to send to a specific port using uh, UDP, which I forget what it is for uh, Pilot. Let's see. Let's see if we can find that easily. Jeez. Um, oh I think we're going to have to use Google. There it is. Okay. Um, and I'm just going to search for the port number, which is 49161. So let's put that port number in here. Oh, not under output, but under output. Not under input, but under output. 49161. And the last thing is uh, Pilot does not want to receive its messages um, well it wants to receive them in a certain way i think uh, maybe i'll load the configuration to show that but essentially we've got a websocket server set up and we've got a udp sender set up now the way that we connect the two of them is by adding a state and adding a mapping so mapping is just translating an input to an output really simple um, for this, we would basically say, what's the input value? And it'll come from the WebSocket server. And then we'll say, uh, oops, what's the output? And that's going to be going to the UDP uh, sender. So let me forget about this and just open a uh, file. So we'll open the file that's actually... This is a newer version. I just uh, I just downloaded it, so hopefully this works. But um, if we look in the repo, there's actually the file right there. So that's the file I loaded. Each one of these uh, folders has uh, the configuration file for for um, Shutain. So now let's look specifically at what's happening here. We've got the WebSocket server colon separated. Uh, first value is the name. That's the important part. So remember, we have in here we're sending a Name, we're sending note, where is it? Note colon and then the message. So that's where uh, here we are saying the first value is the name. So date, note is going to be the name of the thing that comes in. Um, and then just here uh, we'll take, so this is a value. And the way that it's found it is by just sending. So let me just go in here and run this in the live server. And here is the, oof, everything's slow. Here's the whole page, right? So it just put, you put in a, a note and then hit play note. And so if we look in Chatain, um, it should say down here that a WebSocket server connection was opened from this port. And so that's, um, that's our web page. It just, it just opened a, a socket connection. And if we wanted to make sure of that, we can do F12 to um, see the console down here and connected to socket server at 127.0.0.1.8080. So that's the log that I made uh, in my P5 sketch. So um, if I hit play note, you could see a message came in right here. And uh, well, it's actually not showing that it came in. So let's show one other thing here, debugging. If you click on uh, the WebSocket server, see it says one client is connected. And over here it says connected clients one, that's our web page. And if I hit log incoming, it'll show it every time a message comes in here down in the, the log. So let's try that again. I'll hit it again. So it says a message was received on the WebSocket. It looks like this, note colon 04CFF. And then it says sending 04CFF on UDP. And that's because UDP has log incoming and outgoing. Incoming doesn't matter. It's outgoing that matters. So this whole, that's why we're seeing all this logging information, and it gives us a lot of help. Uh, one of the important things about uh, this translation between WebSockets and UDP is that when wh the WebSocket message gets sent from P5, it has a return at the end, like a new line. So as if we typed the message and then hit enter at the end, and that's part of the string. So here under the mapping, um, this is kind of important when we're sending the message to pilot, it does not want a new line or a carriage return. Those are like enter at the end. So those have to be unchecked. So the, these are details that, you know, it's kind of annoying, but uh, some of these things have to get 
figured out by trial and error in some ways. So uh, the other thing is when I right click here on uh, the input, I want to check always notify changes. And if I didn't do that, what happened was uh, subsequent messages that looked the same wouldn't, wouldn't get translated, wouldn't get mapped. So I had to click that to make sure they always get mapped, even if it's the same message coming in twice. So those were some of the details of the Chatain configuration. But the general thing is we set up an input and output and then a mapping. And that's it. So you can hear it. It's working, right? So if I change this to a different note, there it is. Okay, so um, that's that one. Let me show a different example. This example is actually using the same configuration, but it's using P5 uh, play. So let's look at this example. This is maybe like the, the climax example, but uh, I'm showing it because, okay. <laughs> I'm showing it because um, it uses that same configuration in Chatain. So if I click, it drops a ball. Oh, does it? Okay, there's a ball. So what's happening is um, it basically decides which note to play based on which one it's, uh, which square it's colliding with. And, uh, and it just sends a note when there's a collision. And surprisingly, I mean, that's kind of feels sort of sophisticated, but this is the whole program, right? So uh, that's it. Uh, so this is pretty familiar if, you've, if we've done P5 play, which is that we're setting up some sprites. Same thing, we're setting up the host name and the socket variable. Um, there's a canvas, there's some gravity, I'm rotating the sprites, and then they're making those three block sprites and the ball. And then again, I'm just connecting to the WebSocket server. And uh, I'm just saying anytime a ball collides with a block, play a note. Either, you know, one of these three octaves, depending on the, on the block that it's collided with. And this send note, uh, play note is the same function as before. It's just sending a message that looks like a note with note colon stuck to the beginning. So that's that. That one works. Um, let's find a different example now. So there's two more. One is uh, MIDI CCs to P5JS. So let's load that one. I will stop here. And here's, again, here's a um, configuration file for Chatain. So let's load that. I'll go to File, Open, MIDI CC. So this is MIDI CCs to uh, WebSocket server. So again, we add a WebSocket server. That's that's understandable. Then we add MIDI this time instead of OSC. So what's happening um, instead of U UDP? So what's happening is WebSockets are coming in. That one looks the same as the other configuration, but instead of UDP, we've got MIDI going out. And what I've done here, um, it's kind of interesting. Uh, let me turn on the camera. camera. Okay. Uh, if I press any of these buttons, um, you'll see, oh, it doesn't, okay, it's not working. So we need to choose the device. There's the beat step. And if I choose one of these buttons, you can see right behind the camera, uh, you can see that these messages come in. So let me turn a knob. If I turn a knob, you can see that there are control change messages coming in. And actually it's smart enough to learn these, these new knobs. So as soon as I turn a new knob, it shows the new one here. So it's learning as I go, which is really helpful. So um, what I've set up here is basically uh, mapping for each of three different knobs. If I look at this mapping, it's saying um, that input CC10, which is one of these, I think it's this one, uh, this first knob, when I, when I um, turn CC10, that number, if I turn it right now, you can see the numbers changing up here that number uh, gets sent out through um, MIDI. Uh, sorry, that's coming in through MIDI and it gets sent out through WebSockets. So uh, you can see the output here says WebSocket server and there's the value. Now, one thing I did in between is instead of just making the input uh, MIDI and the output WebSockets is I added a filter in between which remaps the value, which is really handy. It's this kind of thing that I might do in P5, but I'm doing it right here. So I know that this value from the knob is 0 through 125, but, uh, or sorry, 0 through 127, but I, I know that this is going to be a color when I receive it in P5, so I've translated it right here from 0 to 127 to new values 0 to 255. So when it gets sent to uh, P5, it actually is a number between 0 and 255 
So I'll turn it all the way up. There's 255, even though the number coming in from the MIDI controller is 127. So this is actually interesting. This is getting at what, you know, the power of Chatein. You can actually add scripts here to do anything you want. And the scripts are written in JavaScript. So it's, it's within the realm of possibility for you to write a complex script that takes this number that's coming in and translates it to something totally different down here. I wanted to keep it simple, though, and just show a filter that changes that. And then uh, the pads right here, this is uh, pressing any pad on, um, or is it just num pad number one? I forget. Yeah, it's just pad number one. So I just made it so if you press pad number one, it sends a message, which is uh, essentially the, the how hard I push it down determines the number that will get sent to P5. So let's look at the P5 sketch real quick. Um, so here it is. This is even smaller than the other one. I basically have three variables for red, green, blue, and then I have a variable for size. Again, I'm making the uh, I'm setting up the address and the variable for the socket. Then down here, I'm actually creating the socket. This in this case, I have two handlers. One is when the socket gets open, same as before, it just logs a message, and then the other is um, when I receive a message. So this one's a little different because I'm using. Oops, hold on, sorry. Let me get rid of this. Uh, I'm using uh, web sockets not to send a message that will eventually reach pilot. I'm using this to receive messages from Chatein that originated from a MIDI controller. So that's the whole purpose of this demo. So all I'm doing is making a background of RGB color. I'm making a rectangle in the middle that has a size based on um, the size that's coming in. And then this is the message handler uh, function, which takes that event that's coming in and splits it up by a colon. And then it's then the reason why it's split up by a colon is because in Chatein it gets sent as note. How does it get sent? Gets sent as so in the case of red, it gets sent as r colon. I put a prefix here r colon twenty five two fifty five. And then in the case of uh, the pad, when I hit the pad, it go, it sends w colon twenty two. I just made these up, so uh, it's kind of making my own little protocol, which is. It, it's um, a letter, colon, and a number. So if that letter, the first, the first part of that uh, thing that I split, so this is actually taking that R colon number and splitting up, splitting it up by the colon. That's what I'm getting here, and that becomes an array. So the first item in the array, if it's an R, then take the second item in the array, which is the number, and put it into my R variable, which is the amount of red. That I'm going to have in the background. And I do, th I do that for each of these. Now, this is just, uh, you know, P5, just JavaScript stuff. This doesn't have much to do with WebSockets or any of this uh, communication stuff. And this is just, you know, something to figure out. If this doesn't make sense, take another look at it. Let me know if I can, I can help figure this out. But basically, I'm taking a string, I'm splitting it into two parts, and then I'm looking at the, the first part and uh, determining which variable I should adjust. Um, so I get out of that, out of those messages that are coming in, either R colon something, G colon something, B colon something, or W colon something, which W is the size. Let's look at this. Uh, if I right click and open with live server. So um, there's my rectangle. And uh, I think if I turn on the camera again, if I turn the first knob, it's a little weird because it starts out at zero, zero, zero. Once you turn all three knobs, it starts to work better, right? So now I've got some amount of red. I'm turning up the red. I'm turning down the green. I'm turning up the blue. And then we've got the button, which changes the size of the rectangle depending on how hard I hit it. So if I tap it lightly, there we go. OK, that demo works. Let's see what's next. Uh, so by the way, uh, some of this worked, some of it didn't in class, and you know it's just how it is. Like what's going to happen is um, this is a demonstration of two things: one, things work, and then they don't work. But more importantly, uh, when you open a configuration like this, because we're talking about complex systems that involve multiple parts, there's some there are some connections that have to be made again. So when I opened this, for example, the beat step uh, device wasn't selected, and so I had to do that. So there are some things where you know when you have multiple parts and glue in between them. Uh, you have to kind of reconnect things 
um, beforehand. And, you know, when I'm trying to do three demos, four demos at once in class, it's a little tricky, but you can come up with a system where, you know, you plop down to perform and you know these are the connections that have to be made when I'm in a new space. Another problem is that we didn't really, um, you know, the, the next demo is getting OSC messages from a phone and we never really figured out how to do that in class because the network is different. So here at home, it works fine. Um, I tried to use a network from my phone, which should work like a hotspot from my phone that should work and it didn't. But I think, you know, given a few more minutes, we tried to do this all in the last 15 minutes of class. I think given a few more minutes, we would have figured it out. So uh, here is the configuration file for the OSC demo. So let's open that in Chatain. Uh, open OSC. So um, again, I've got a WebSocket server. Nothing has changed there. And you can see that it actually uh, was able to... Not sure. Yeah, right there. WebSocket server is running, but it doesn't show a connection, right? It does show a connect. No, there's zero connected clients. So let's open the um, actual sketch next. So this one is even simpler. Basically, it just is that same setup of receiving a message from WebSockets. Uh, and here is the message handler, which is take that data in. It's just the, the protocol that I've invented this time is that it's two numbers separated by a comma. That's what gets sent from Chatain. So I put that in a, uh, an array called XY, and then I use those XY values to draw on the screen. Very simple program, and it's kind of cool to be able to control the phone, the drawing in the browser from the phone just with this much stuff. So um, I'm going to run this with the live server. Okay, it's, try, it's drawing a circle up there in the corner. That's not exactly what we want, but let's let's see if we can get this to work. So first of all, uh, it shows down here that a WebSocket server connection was opened. It shows that we have a connected client. Let me um, open on my phone the uh, OSC, Touch OSC app. So some of the things, um, can I rotate this? Let's see if I can rotate this in real time here. Flip vertical. That did not work. <laughs> okay, so um, flip vertical and rotate 180 degrees. There we go. I don't think you can see that anyway. But um, basically, the way that Touch OSC works is just an, a, an application that sends OSC messages. It, um, it looks for, uh, it asks you basically to, to set up the layout that you want, which there are lots of different layouts, um, which is how it looks on screen. And then uh, it asks you for the OS, the, the address of the server. But honestly, it should, as soon as I turn this on, it should show that Chatain is discovering it. It's not showing it here. This is what happened in class, so let's see. Um, oh, let's see. Well, so what I would like is to have it just discover um, discover that this application is running and that's happened in the past where it just shows up down here that a new OSC service was discovered this one says it's discovered the one from Chatain but uh, it's not showing the one from the phone so whatever I'll type in the address and that's um, only slightly inconvenient so they heard well actually that is the address and it says found hosts none so hmm well yeah this is interesting because Oh, okay, there it is. So as I do this, I can see some messages showing up here under the fader. Took a little bit to get it connected, though. Hmm. Well, let's see um, what's happening. So we've got web, the WebSocket server. Again, same exact setup as before. Then we've got OSC, and that's coming in uh, from some OSC a client like this one on the phone it could be anything else it could be a hardware device could be other piece of software it could be software on my computer instead of the phone 
and um, we can see as I change things on here, let's try this dial, you can see a new thing showed up here, the Rotary 5. Let me add another one, Rotary 6 showed up. So it's actually learning again, like MIDI, it's showing the messages so we don't have to look them up and discover like what the actual uh, name of this little uh, Rotary thing is. It actually figures it out for me as soon as I send. So let's, I, I mean, this is working. I think if I look at the mapping, it's taking an input value from OSC, which is this X and Y from this, um, let's see, it's on this, this tab. So it's taking these X and Y values. And then again, I use filters to remap it to a different uh, set of numbers. Why am I doing this? Well, the number that shows up here is like X is zero through one and Y is zero through one. And what I'd like is for them to actually get translated to the size of my canvas. So it takes zero to one and translates it to zero to 800. And it does that for both X and Y. And uh, that's really simple. I mean, like a, it basically takes all of the parameters that are coming in both X and Y and scales them up. So when uh, P5 receives them, they look more like this, which is numbers that are the size of my canvas, 0 through 800. So this should be working, I think. Let's try this. Um, here's P5. OK, let's see. So as I do this, I am drawing on the screen. So. Um, the whole idea of these demos was to show several ways that we can use um, Chatein as this glue between uh, different um, different protocols. And uh, we did three of them, or four of them. We did first just P5, sending messages through WebSockets, and then tr having Chatein translate them to UDP and uh, getting received by the pilot synthesizer. Uh, that could also be uh, translation between WebSockets to MIDI and then to GarageBand. That would perform the same thing, but GarageBand would be the synthesizer instead. It doesn't use UDP, it uses MIDI, so that would be a different setup in Chatein, but it could work just as well. And then um, we did the same thing with P5 Play. So as the collisions in P5 Play happened, it sent notes through um, WebSockets. They got translated to UDP messages and Pilot played the, played the sounds. And then the other two are going the other way, right? They're MIDI messages coming in from the MIDI controller uh, in this example and getting translated to WebSockets messages, which uh, P5 catches. And uh, in this example, it just changed the color. Oh, sorry. This is, yeah, this is this one. Uh, changes the, the color of the... Um, of the uh, background and changes the size of the rectangle based on those MIDI messages that came in and got translated to um, WebSockets messages that P5 could accept. And then the last one was getting OSC messages. Those came from my phone using the Touch OSC app and uh, it translated those to WebSockets messages which my P5 program caught and um, used as coordinates on screen for the for the circle that was getting moved around. So four totally different examples, not totally, four different examples, and uh, hopefully give you a sense of the fact that we can talk to anything using Chatein um, just by translating, having it translate between protocols, between hardware, between software. It's pretty amazing software. Uh, this part, the, the you know, the configuration of Chatein, I can help with, and um, but hopefully this part of sending WebSockets and receiving WebSockets makes sense to you and that you, you can get started on that on your own. And uh, again, I'll help with the configuration of Chatein because it's a little complex and maybe a little finicky because there's so many options. Um, okay, that's it. Thanks.